What is this? One more skyscraper? Yes, it is. It's one of these cornerstones, complete with window glass, bathroom tile, and whatever else was around. A cartoonist as well as a lawyer, as well as a builder. And look at this wonderful stonework. The guy must have put it up stone by stone. And he would top it off with a, with a layer of, uh, of slate and then maybe come back another time and put in another tier, and then another layer of slate. It's, it's, like, uh, it's like geological formations, but made by the hand of man. And here you see it again down here. He, he must have topped it off at the end of each building season and then go wherever he lived, and then another year would be that. It's like, like the, the rings of a tree, and so you see it here in tiers. It's actually very beautiful when you look carefully. At first, it just seems to be just rough, crude stonework. But when you, when you, uh, when you look further, you see there's detail, a very different kind of detail than we, than we use on Park Avenue. <laughs> Projects, apartment buildings, aqueducts, Yankee Stadium. The work of hundreds of skilled men and women. But in some ways, remains such as these tell more about the human spirit than the others put together.
This building has pierced our consciousness like few others, and it's only 30 years old. The most controversial building in the history of New York City, the Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum, is open to the public 15 years after it was commissioned from the late architect Frank Lloyd Wright. Inside, the museum consists essentially of a single continuous spiral ramp whose design was the crux of battles with the city's construction code and helped delay completion. The slope is gradual, so the museum goer doesn't notice he is not standing on the horizontal. But the pictures, standing out from the walls on special mountings, are adjusted to the horizontal. So, in a literal sense, gallery goers and modern art here displayed are not strictly on the same plane. Mayor Wagner and Harry F. Guggenheim, nephew of the philanthropist and art collector Solomon R. Guggenheim, who before his death commissioned the museum, look over Gotham's new showplace of art for the avant-garde. The museum's merits or defects remain to be judged in the perspective of time, but it is notable as the only building by Frank Lloyd Wright in New York City and the last major creation of one of the great architects of our time. Has it stood up to the test of time? Yes, the Guggenheim Museum Central Space, designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, is one of the greatest modern interiors in the world. The light doesn't fill the central well, but opens it up. The spiraling ramp leading to the central plaza somehow allows the visitor to meander from the artwork on the walls to the artwork of the walls. Wright triumphed not only in getting New York's permission to use new structural techniques for the museum, he created a landmark which transformed concrete into a surface upon which and through which the visitor floats. The open-air arches of a Gothic cathedral on the shores of Manhattan Island and Long Island, bound together by steel, the filigree of cables supporting roadways and walkway, this is the Brooklyn Bridge. Originally the Great East River Bridge, designed by John Roebling and completed under the supervision of his son and daughter-in-law, it took over 15 years to build. First, the towers rose on the shorelines, then the span reached out to link the cities of Brooklyn and Manhattan. It was a major architectural accomplishment for its time. It's still one of the greatest man-made structures in New York. The massive pedestal supporting the stone cables and the spiderwork of cabled steel allow us to feel like we're walking and driving across the sky.